my idea for saving plastic is you work all your life until you can save up and then get started and then you buy something then you save up a whole more and then you go so it was the slow process right if you didn't have the capital up front to do it all right so welcome to the millionaire listed today our guest is constance kawa small she's a brazilian and uh, she's uh, creating some big waves on the uh, real estate investing world. So, Constance, tell us about your story. Um, we're very excited to have you on our show. Thanks, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. It's my first podcast. I, I would love to share my story with everybody. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I came from Brazil in 2005. Um, that's when I migrated to the United States. I had just finished college. Um, and honestly, Brazil, I think most, like most of, you know, South American countries is so hard to, you know, make money and financially it's very difficult. So I had no prospects when I finished college. So, okay, so what, right? Um, and with that, then I decided to come to the U.S. So I had come before, um, but I said, okay, no, this time I'm going to come uh, my original plan was to stay for about two years, make the most money, work the most I could and go back to then get started, you know, with some capital in Brazil. So let me, let me cut you there. Cause I read your article, sure. right? And, and my brother did too. <laughs> yeah. And just to go in more detail. So you yeah. came here to the United States and you had three jobs, right? I did. So actually it was such an adventure. Looking back then, I don't know how my parents actually allowed me to do that because yeah. I didn't know a single soul. I came all by myself. Um, and I had, I had my return ticket for three months later in case things didn't work out, but I only had a thousand dollars in my pocket, mm -hmm. not knowing anybody. Uh, so I, I only had one point of contact, which is where I said that I was going to rent a room from. That was the only point of contact of, I had. So honestly, when I came with a thousand dollars in my pocket, about 450 was set to pay rent. So mm -hmm. I honestly had the remaining of that money to kind of get going for three months because that's what my return ticket was. Right. So the next day, so funny how things work, right? You can call it the universe, God, or whatever you believe in. But um, the ne very next day that I arrived to the U.S., I got my first job. Nice. So, and I mean, it was just a hostess job at a restaurant, paying minimal wage at the time, which was six six dollars and 75 cents i was so excited yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know i was just i was here to make money i was here to work my butt off and um so i just i was working sunday through sunday uh, i had three jobs and that's how you know it started so amazing so you started as a, what, what were the other two jobs so I was a hostess at one place. I was delivering pizza in San Diego on the weekends. And the third job was also a restaurant. I was a server part-time at another restaurant. So nice. yeah, so, you know, all the sub type of jobs that, you know, as an immigrant, we all know we go through the hard times of getting our feet up and you know yeah, so you gotta make it survive on whatever you can yeah and i was not scared i knew it was gonna come for you know the hard work that was the point of it i was not scared of the time i don't so many things i was a nanny i was you know a caregiver i was not scared of things so yeah. just pull up pull up your sleeves and get to work <laughs> nice you obviously didn't go back to brazil so what? I had, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think within three, three or six months, I can't quite remember that I was here. Um, I met a sailor. We were, in, I was in San Diego at the time, and uh, that sailor, which is now my husband, uh, he was, um, he was doing, doing a, um, he was serving in San Diego too. So we met, and the moment we met, it's just, okay, I guess there's no going back to Brazil now, right? So, so, yeah, so within, I think, a year that we met, we got married, you know, military life, which is funny, I've noticed a lot of military, they get married so fast, right, and so uh -huh. early, so young. Uh, so, we just, it was just what 
I guess was meant to happen and that's why I haven't gone back. The plan of going back in two years just fell through and <laughs> here nice. I am. Yeah. Yeah. So what was uh from there, you know, obviously you came up, you you stayed here uh in the US, you you know, you established, you have a husband, I imagine you guys have kids now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, right, now yeah. we have two kids, age four and six. Yes. That's awesome. So then how from there, how did you when did you start getting interested in real estate or did that interest come before that? So I remember as a child, I, I've always wanted to be an architect. I wanted to go to college actually to become an architect, but I, I wasn't too much into math and I was under the impression, you see, you know, I don't, I don't, maybe this is not for me. And honestly, I don't think I had enough money to pay for college uh for that long so i i took another degree uh, that was cheaper in business uh you know to get and i paid myself through college uh working at the same time um but then it's kind of the architect got on the side of my mind but i i remember we've always had a family a friend in Brazil that was into real estate investing and he was into buy and hold and he even made some of his own developments and he was like amazing what he could do and I was just I always looked up, looked up to him you know so I think that was always in the back of my head but not knowing what I know now um, my idea of real estate investing is you work all your life until you can save up and then get started and then you buy something then you save up a whole more and then you go so it was the slow process right if you didn't have the capital up front to do it so that that was my thought at the time uh, and when when we got married here in san diego we so right in the beginning my husband went on a long deployment and it was about time for him to re-enlist and we've always lived very frugally we under our means we were very humble and you know so we weren't crazy spending money so that helped us saved up and my three jobs too so uh, we saved up some money and that coincided with his re-enlistment bonus and the long deployment so at sea duty we were able to save up, I think, about fifty thousand in a few in a couple of years or so, um, and I think okay, the market had just crashed because it was two thousand eighteen. Yeah, two thousand eight. I'm sorry, two thousand eight at the time. <coughs> so I said, you know what? We're living in a one bedroom. Let's buy our place. So, and funny because we didn't even know about VA. <laughs> so I thought I was going to use the fifty thousand to buy our home and then somebody said well you don't know oh yeah you don't even have to put money down so we bought our place and we still have the fifty thousand. and it said you know what let's just use that to buy a rental so we decided to buy our first rental property which is a condo in tampa and the reason we chose tampa at the time was just because my husband's family is all from there so i said okay it just makes sense maybe one day we'll end up there and you know we're more familiar with the market and we can make trips and so on so that's how i got started with a va on our own property on our primary residence and then with the 50k that we had saved up we actually purchased cash the condo that we still own wow that's nice. That's so nice. where where was the uh, the second property at? So the second property was the condo in Tampa. Oh, it's in Tampa as well. Yeah. No, okay. no, no. Because the first one we bought was in San Diego. That's where okay, we were got stationed. It. Yeah. Got it. That's the one we bought our primary residence with the VA, no cash down, no no uh, down payment. Yes. And and then the second one was the condo. So 2008 and beginning of 2009 is when we bought the rental uh, cash for 50k nice awesome nice so has that been your is that your primary strategy using the va or <laughs> no so still at that time i had the same mindset right that you still have to wait all this time okay now we bought this we bought that and now we have no money so let's rent it out save all these years again until we can buy again so in 2018 is when we got sent here to Hawaii. I'm now in Hawaii. Um, and we decided to sell our property in San Diego. 
just because we we were going to rent it out, but we were having trouble with tenants and property management. And um, I know we had got pretty good equity on it. Uh, you know, the prices have gone quite up since we bought it. And we were within, I don't know if everybody knows yet, but the, the, that 5-2 rule that I've been told for not paying property taxes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, which I actually heard the other day. It's actually for military, you have a, a separate side of rules. I don't know if anybody, but feel free to dig this out. And well, can you, can, you, can you tell us more about it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everybody says, or I heard when we decided to sell that, that there is a 5-2 rule. Uh, if you live in this, we're talking taxes here, right? So if you live two of the last five years of a property you own, you don't have to pay sales tax on that. Yeah. So we capital, won't... capital capital gains. Yeah. Correct. Right. So uh, we if we stayed here, stationed in Hawaii, and rented for the three years that we were going to be here, we were going to miss out on the capital gains, right? So mm -hmm. that's it. So we were having trouble with tenants. We're not kind of getting the right PM or property manager. So, and we're going to make good money. For, so we decided to sell it. Um, we sold it. I think we profit about 175K um, on that property. And that's the money to say, okay, now let's reinvest this money. And I wanted, okay, let's just get, we have a good property manager in Tampa. So I told my husband, you know, let's just buy another one cash and, and go from there. So I, I was looking a month goes by, we put in a couple offers, they fall through and another month goes by and I'm like, mm, okay, I'm not feeling the prices because obviously it's not 2008 anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> So as I'm researching, digging out markets, I came across bigger pockets. Yeah. And that's why it's like a new world opened up in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. The moment I came across bigger pockets, I was breathing, sleeping, eating bigger pockets, <laughs> reading yeah. everything I could, forums and articles and podcasts and like oh my gosh there are all these different strategies there's no just saving up a whole lifetime to invest yep. right so i was so excited about it so long story short instead of buying cash in florida we decided to leverage that profit of 175k into down payments or and or doing the birth strategy nice. right uh, I did a very thorough research on markets that were, um, you know, still fairly under average national to invest as an entry point um, and took into consideration rent to value ratios where you still, even though they're under national average, you still get pretty good rent for what you have. Um, I remember last year, so I narrowed down to five locations in the US and I started networking with people in bigger pockets and I said, okay, I'm up for investing in these five locations. Whichever I find the, a good deal first, that's what I'm going for. And what are those, those, those five locations? Oh my gosh, let me see. So it was, uh, I know some people might want to kill me for this, but it was actually Detroit which okay. is very risky, a very challenging market to but work it is, with. For what I hear, it's, it's coming up, uh, you know, slowly but surely. Yes, yeah. yes. So, I mean, it was hit pretty bad. Yeah. And I don't see how much bottom it can go. So you only yeah. see up from here. You know, that's yeah. at least how I feel about it. A lot of new development. So it's slowly going up. It's definitely not a place for fast equity building. It's more mm -hmm cash flow yeah. market, right? With a lot of risks. Yeah. Um, so it was Detroit, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Huntsville, and um, Kansas City. Okay. Yeah, I think these were my top five that I was open to invest. Uh, and it so happened that the deal for Detroit came first through a point of contact. Uh, in a week later, I got into contract, another 
DOI couldn't pass in uh, Pittsburgh came along and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I just went into both deals at the same time. <laughs> okay. So can you tell us, can you tell us more about those deals? Like the details on the, what type of properties and, and, and what was the investment? Yeah. So the first year in Detroit, that's a triplex. Uh, and I bought it cash. I bought it from a wholesaler. Uh, so, and that's the one that we bought it cash for the Burr strategy. For those that haven't heard of Burr strategy, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat, right? Uh, so we bought that one to attempt a Burr strategy, which is my first one. And we should be wrapping up here shortly. Nice. Uh, so that one, uh, triplex, Burr strategy, and we paid 85K cash for that one. The other one that came about a, a week later, so since we had kind of our money, okay, we're gonna have to use some of the money for that. I don't wanna, the other one was a fourplex in Pittsburgh, suburbs, both suburbs, right? It's Detroit, it's not the town, it's a suburb, and Pittsburgh is a suburb too, east of, the, east of Pittsburgh. That's a fourplex, and we decided to just do a traditional 30 year uh, financing on that one. Conventional uh, or conventional, like conventional. <clears throat> yeah, conventional. Yeah, so that's where we're at. So you needed some rehab, but I think we're pretty good on you, you know returns and cash on cash returns and cash flow. Nice. So uh, what the uh, investing out of state, right? Because you invest yeah. in long distance. How yeah. do you how do you how do you personally manage that? Okay, it's not easy. I know. <laughs> we do that. <laughs> we, do that so we, we understand that struggle. Yeah, I know. We just want to know what you do. It's, it's challenging. So I think um, I started off trying to develop relationships and networking with people in bigger pockets, right? And what I found is once you find one person that, you know, you ha you're pretty good about that person, you're having that feeling, you know, it's going to work out. Typically, that one person, if they're experienced, they open up relationships for you. Yep. And you can kind of build a team from there, right? Um, but so managing my PMs, both of my PMs, so that's who I actually got started. I got started with a realtor and a PM, right? Uh, both of my PMs, my, my um, property managers are the ones running my rehabs. So they help me out. They you know, they're the ones that put me in contact with contractors, but they're the ones managing rehab. So um, I mostly just talk to them daily or every other two days to, to get on the progress, crunch numbers together, see, you know, quotes and what we're going to do and make decisions from there. So that's kind of how I've been doing. And was I don't the answer your question or not. No, 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 you did. Yeah, basically. But uh, what's the, the, the biggest challenge you've had so far with those, with those two investments? <laughs> so I see for the BRRRR. I'm currently on the uh, refinance part of the BRRRR, right? We started out the paperwork with the lender. Um, and I think... My biggest challenge with the birth so far is, and I know I try to be conservative on rehab costs, <laughs> but even being conservative, we went over budget. Okay. So I know my birth is not going to be a perfect birth because I'm not going to be able to get back everything I'm putting in. I'm going to have to leave some money behind. Um, and it ended up that our appraisal came at what I was expecting um and yeah it came as what i was expecting but because we went over budget i'm not going to be able to pull out all the rehab costs that i put in yeah so for that reason it's gonna come i'm gonna end up doing instead of doing a cash out refinance i'm doing a delayed financing on it um so with the delayed financing uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but the cash out refi, you can do it within six months, right, of purchasing the property. And you can get probably anything from 70, and I've even heard of, you know, 80% cash mm -hmm. back on, on, on the appraisal value. Um, I knew mine was going to come at purchase price, uh, kind of. 
so that's why we decided to do the delayed financing and do it earlier than waiting the six months. Because if it was going to be the same price that we paid for, um, then I might as well grab that money earlier to read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that makes sense. Yeah. So again, my biggest challenge was the, you know, going over budget with the rehab costs. <laughs> yeah. But it happens and you know what? You, you live and you learn, right? That's what this game is about. Yeah. Yeah, and there is really no no failing in real estate. You you just pick it back up and you learn from it. That's yeah. really all you can do. And, and it seems like you're having so much fun. That why not? I am. Oh my gosh, I, I'm loving. It. I, know. <laughs> I am loving this. And when we were looking into this, you know, do we want to do some syndication? I don't know. But I'm a bit of a control freak, and I love to have my hands on everything. If I could, I would go and try to manage or try to get into some construction and, and rehabbing with my own hands, but I don't know yeah. how to do that. Yeah. Um, so I like to be part of it and being part of making decisions, and, you know, I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah. have, I also read that you did some house hacking. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. House hacking. So I actually never thought about it as a, as an, a, a real estate investing strategy, right? Since I think since our first uh, condo that we purchased in San Diego, our primary residence, it just happened that friends would come to us. Hey, you guys have a room. Do you mind renting it out for us or whatever? Right. <laughs> it just happened that people would come after and say, Hey, you know, you have it. So we always did. We always just rented a room in our house for, for a friend or, you know, somebody would come along. We never looked for anybody. And, you know, for spouses that are out there, um, you know, it can get pretty lonely when your husband is underway or your spouses are underway or on the long deployment. So I thought, why not? So it was good company. It would help us, you know, financially. So... And as a matter of fact, so here I have a few properties, a few units, and next two, next two weeks, I'm going to have another person moving into my house here in Hawaii. We're going to be house packing still. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. So how, many, how many units total are you at? <clears throat> so now I have three properties totaling eight units. And you said... Because in your in your uh, article you mentioned that you already supplemented your your uh, the income that you do W yes. two income right yes yes so I was working I wasn't working full time so it's not like it was a huge amount of money right I okay. was working part time but I was a contractor for the Department of Labor teaching um, you know the TAP class the transition mm -hmm. assistant program. Uh, so I was doing seminars and, and teaching the military community and how to transition to the civilian workforce. But it was a part-time job. It still paid well for a part-time job. Uh, so my first goal was uh, when I got into, you know, all the, the strategies, okay, I can do this. My first goal was to replace my salary so I can step up away uh from my position and focus on investing full time and honestly with these two purchases that i did last year uh, i was able to do that so, <laughs> so for everybody out there that you know just laser focus on not only what your goals are if you want to leave your w2 but how put it on paper what do you need to get there how many properties do all those calculations, you know, of cash flow and expenses and all that for you to be able to, to, to do that. Okay. So that, that actually leads perfectly into my next question. Yeah. What is your criteria? What do you look at for an investment to be uh, right? Okay. So first, now I'm focusing, now having done a traditional financing, buy and hold and having done a burr, uh, I've decided that the birth strategy is what's going to work for me so I can keep reinvesting until I get my final goal, which I'll share later. Uh, but birth is going to be the, the strategy for me. So, and I am focusing on small multifamily, so probably two to four units. Uh, that cash flow no less than 175 per door. 
$175 per door uh, and or give me a about 12 to 14 cash on cash return. I like it. Yeah, so that's me, a minimum. <laughs> yes, yeah. you use the, since you're a bigger pockets fan, you use the bigger pockets calculator, right? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. love that calculator. I already tell people, <laughs> why reinvent the wheel? Bigger yeah. pocket has the best calculators out there. I don't care. It is. Yeah. It is. I still struggle, I gotta say though, I still struggle what to calculate, for example, for capital gains. So I'm still learning that. I'm sure that the more I'm familiar with my market and the type of property, that will come, you know, easily. But if, yeah, but I love the I mean, you already whether you know it or not you know people try to do all the steps it's like i need to know everything well you don't know everything and you already supplemented your your w2 income <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yeah it, it tells people you don't need to know everything you don't need to know the market a hundred percent you don't need to be an expert on every single detail for you to be able to su be successful on real estate i think real estate is so easy uh to comprehend and to uh to calculate you know yeah. so um so that, that's pretty amazing thank you thank you so you always look at above obviously you're not looking to break even and you're not looking to go below right so right positive above, you know positive and you account for pm capital expenditure uh vacancy um all that right that's yes. True. maintenance yes Yes, I'm accounting for all of it. Because if, if you guys see, or you know, if whoever is listening, if you see on the calculator, it has a place that's to put that. all that. So you can't even miss. You no, know? Yeah, I get you. And that's what I try yeah. to tell some people, I, especially the people I work with. Because <laughs> they, they go, <laughs> they tell me, oh, my, my, prop, my mortgage is 1200 but I can rent for 1500 And I'm like, ah, you might get a little bit close there. You might break even or you might go negative. Are you okay mm -hmm. with money coming out of your pocket so you know sometimes you have yeah. to tell people like there's a lot more that you have to account for maintenance yeah so, yeah that's all big stuff and what a lot of people don't realize is when you put in those those numbers uh you're kind of breaking it down monthly right what your expenses are going to be but for example capital gains all the big ticket items they're typically not going to come monthly that you're breaking them down if something mm -hmm. breaks it's going to hit you at one big chunk at a time right yeah so when you break it down you just have to realize or you know people have to realize you know m most months are gonna you're gonna be getting more than what you even assume you were but when those big items happen that's what you have to account for right exactly yeah you gotta have those those uh, reserves yeah so i know you do real estate and most people that do real estate uh, are very passionate about it. Do you do stocks as well? Do you do any other investing? Or are you or are you solely on real estate? No. So we actually have mutual funds where we do have some applications in the market that we've had since we got married. We decided to start putting money aside for mutual funds. I don't personally manage our funds. We have a financial advisor that takes care of that. Uh, and we've also started putting money from the beginning in our retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, my husband has a TSP account and we both have Roth IRAs uh, that we put into. Uh, but, you know, the, the stock markets, if you see the average, you typically, like last year, I was looking today. Uh, <laughs> last today, was, year, today was crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, and I was I, I was doing some research last year. The average return on investment for stock markets is about ten percent, right? And here I am looking for properties that will give me a return of twelve or more, you know, to make it worth the, the work and and, and yeah. all that, you know. So. And not only that, but it produces you cash flow. You know, yeah. stock market stock in 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 uh, retirement account won't give you a, a monthly paycheck. Plus yeah. the 12%, yeah. you know, yeah. so yeah. yeah but but the, I, I think the biggest thing about real estate is the taxes. If you know how to play it right, you won't ever have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can just continue building wealth, 1031, yeah. uh, cost segregation, you name it. And you will never, I mean, that's how the 1% get into the 1%. 
they they don't pay because they know how to write it off. And you can't yeah. do that with stocks. You can't do that with mutual funds. You can't yeah. do that with anything else that I know about. So yeah. Anyone know yeah. Anything else you could do that with? Let me know because that's my next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I also feel that the stock market fluctuates a lot more than mm -hmm. the real estate market, right? Of course, we have ups and downs in the real estate market, but it it it's not as fast as an up and down than the stock market is. So. Yeah. <laughs> so so tell us what what are your what are your goals? Where are you going with this? Okay, so the first goal we met, right, which was replacing my W-2. Now, my next goal is my husband, um, he's 17 years in now, but I think he's going to end up doing 22. Um, and so the goal is in five years when he retires to offset what he was getting uh, with real estate income, with passive income. So nice. that's what we're cal calculating, yeah. So that's the goal. And then I broke it down too. I said, okay, so for us to get how much it is, right? I calculate, okay, this is how much we need. Because it remember, it's just not making goals, right? We have to break it down and see how we're going to accomplish. Yeah. I thought it was just daydreaming, like I said on the article. Yeah. <laughs> so I calculate, okay, to offset, as off now, if he retires at the rank that he is, this is how much is going to be. Uh, how much do we need per year? Because we're doing five years from there. Per year, we need to add, I think it was about 2000 a year of uh, cash flow. And then how many properties or how many doors do I need to purchase within that year to achieve that cash flow that I want to get? So. Awesome. Yeah. So, so and, you did break it down all the way to how many units and you... You mentioned earlier 125, 175. 175. 175. Cash flow. And that, that's part of your calculation, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if I get a one, so I, I was looking, it could be anything. So it depends if I buy like a duplex, two units, or a fourplex on how many then I actually need. Uh, but we were looking at about 10 to 12 doors this year to be able to meet the 2000 nice depending on the property of course yeah, awesome and i'm, I'm curious because so usually you see the the opposite of of what you do right in, in regards to relationship usually it's the husband <laughs> working on the real estate and and uh and the uh, and the wife is doing something else right um, <laughs> yeah how how come it, or, or is your husband involved in it too but it's just that he's too busy in the in the, uh, in the navy no this is all my idea <laughs> <laughs> this is all my idea and i'm so glad he's on board of it i remember when that initial money that we had it saved up uh like a lot of the young guys out there he wanted to come back and just buy a a new toy, which is a motorcycle, right? Okay. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, the market is down. So against his <laughs> initial yeah. desire, so he held off on the motorcycle, and that's how he started investing. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, I'm, I'm very blessed that he, he's open and he sees, uh, because my, my husband is about money and the numbers right so if i show him hey this is what can happen if we do it then he's totally on board right and um and i know a lot of people have challenges on how do i get my other half on board with this or so for me it's showing the numbers he's always trusted me on my decisions i'm pretty creative on how to you know on on how to deal with money and how to invest so he's on board with that Although I gotta say another big challenge that I have when real estate investing is because I'm still a fairly new investor uh, and now I don't have my W-2 job. So loans, getting loans on my name is a challenge, right? And yeah. here you have a pretty solid resume for investing. Uh, it's challenging to get loans uh, with good terms or a loan with a good term, right? So everything, I take care of everything, but he's, he has to sign. Yeah. <laughs> so every, we're doing things is still all on his name and on his credit until I have more experience to start getting things on my, or, or, or more deals under my name to start applying, getting better uh, investor rates. Got it. 
Uh -huh. That's awesome. Now, next question is, did he get the motorcycle yet or not yet? <laughs> he did get a motorcycle or did okay. he get a car? I don't remember, but he <laughs> got a toy. At some okay. point, yeah, at some point, I think when we were in Japan, because we were stationed in Japan at some point, and he, he got a car that he was like, a dream car that he wanted so <laughs> that's awesome that's amazing yeah that's amazing no, yeah it's pretty cool that you guys were able to you know especially you from brazil thousand dollars to now have all these properties and what's the total network oh, so i think we're close to 500 <laughs> yeah 500k so half a million dollars is kind of where we are uh, because of course if you remember I'm, I'm investing in the more affordable markets right so we're about 5k on top of still our mutual funds and things but real estate talking the portfolio is worth about 5k that's awesome that's yeah. awesome that that really shows you know in, in, you know you're not small time like 500k is 500k like yeah. That's a lot of property, and that's a lot of cash flow, and that's a lot of management, that's a lot of responsibility. You know, yeah. people, people don't, you know, it's not just about being a, a landlord, you also have the responsibility to your tenants and mm -hmm. take care of people, right? So, yeah, yeah. And I gotta say, my my sweetheart here is actually the fourplex if you don't mind me sharing the fourplex that i have in pittsburgh it was such a good deal that popped up you know you have to get used to looking at properties i look at properties every day right and then when this one came in the market i knew and i crunched the numbers and i knew it was such an awesome deal so i jumped in it right away which so many people get into analysis paralysis oh there's not you know this and you know this is the numbers show it's just an awesome deal so we we put an offer the very next day got accepted, uh, and i was so excited about and uh, now we are almost with all the units after rehabbing all the units but one is rented out which is in the market now for rent but um for this one honestly i'm getting about 19 percent cash on cash return 19 uh, 19 yes wow. yeah yeah so about 19 percent cash on cash return and i'm looking at about 750 cash flow nice, nice. yeah that's my little, little sweetheart is such a good deal <laughs> how, do you, how do you find your deals so pittsburgh i have a realtor i have a real estate agent um and in detroit i have an agent but i also have a couple wholesalers that okay. you know i get deals from but i honestly i'm on zillow <laughs> i'm on zillow yeah. every day yes nice yeah so, do you call so, people do you poke call no i don't no so this is one thing that i know i have to overcome I I still I, I'm, I have trouble approaching like on the cold calling or you know fighting deals the way that people send letters. I still not quite there yet, <laughs> so I'm still using traditional real estate agents and yeah. No, I, 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 that's not for you know. It might be your thing. It might not be. So for me, that wasn't my thing. Like I I tried the whole wholesaler thing. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't work. No, well, not that I I'm sure I could have made it work. But I didn't like it. Yeah. yeah. I was I was part of a team and we would knock on doors and people would yell at us and this and that. And, <laughs> yeah, nah. that's not my thing. <laughs> yeah. You know? So that's why I say everyone, everyone has to find their, their niche, their thing. They yeah, I, I did that too because that's that's basically what you hear all the time. You hear it from everybody. You know, you gotta do the 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 marketing, the mail marketing, the 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 uh, call calls and and that's how you start knocking on doors too. And it was like, oh my God, there has to, there has to be an easier way than this because I I can't do this every day, you know. Um, but that's that's pretty great. So you're you're always on Zillow, but the properties that you're getting from from the realtor, for example, in Pittsburgh, was it a off market property or was it already in the MLS? No, it's a, it was on the MLS. And the first day, so I got a notification as soon as it popped, and I, I thought it was interesting. I crunched the deals and I mean the numbers, and and I knew it. So we jumped. And how long? 
So that's what people are saying now, that it's actually a hot market and it's kind of hard to find good deals, right? So if, if that's why I'm always tuned in on the notifications I get via emails or, you know, to review what you get right away, because that might be gone the very next day, right? Yeah. <laughs> the property, so you haven't gone to those properties at all? You haven't gone? And, and... I haven't. I wish. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so all we've been doing, we've been FaceTiming, you know, they show me, they send me pictures. Uh, I do plan on going when I can, when the schedule allows, the husband is home and we have, you know, the kids taken care of so I can hop on. It's still on my list to do this year. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and get more familiar with neighborhoods, especially in Detroit, that I hear is very challenging. Yes. Um, so I do want to, I do want to make a trip to get uh, even better feeling of you know where I'm investing in good locations and things like that. Yeah, no, that's really important. You got to know a little bit about about that area. I, I can tell you that uh, I haven't been to our property. No, so don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was no, but I did flew. One one of the best experiences was that the the fact that I was able to go out there and network. I love networking. So, uh, so it was, it was a great experience actually flying out there and, and meeting all these people, uh, yeah. um, lenders and realtors and wholesalers, and then, uh, people that were selling their portfolios. Uh, so it was, it was really a great experience to be able to just fly there. And then the, the whole transaction was online and over the mm -hmm. phone. And, um, but it was, it was awesome. And, and the way that you're doing it is pretty amazing too, that you find mm -hmm. people and they build a team long distance and they were, the fact that you were able to trust people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which we do, you know, and, and, yeah. and I don't, I, I don't know. And, and probably Oscar has a different perspective, but I don't think it was as, as difficult as people might, but might, might say it was. To build was a team, it, you mean? Yeah. Was it difficult for you or was it just trusting and your, and your gut feeling? Yeah. So I think I'm pretty good with my PMs. Um, but even them to kind of contractors, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the most difficult part, contractors. Uh, and, and you know, they rehab, at least for me, they rehab. So yeah. we're still, and, and here's another reason, just to make it clear to everybody why my bird deal is not 100% and, and why we're going over budget, right? It's one thing that I did not, no, when I got into the Detroit market, for example, they have city inspections on rental properties. So you have to register the rental property with the city and they send out an inspector. And after a rehab was done, the inspector came and said, nope, you still got to fix this, this and that, which we thought it wasn't, it wasn't a safety hazard and this and that, but they were giving <laughs> I said, okay, great. Yeah. Now we're going to have to spend, we thought we were done and here we are having to tack a couple more things that were, you know. Yeah, so. we, we ran into that same thing. It's called the point of sale inspection. And yeah. they're like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah. We inspect the property and blah, blah, blah. And you got to fix this. Like, yeah. I, I thought we were going to be good from day one. No. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. You, and you learn from it. Yeah, you learn from it. That's it. And I got to say the, the, the part, for example, of the burr, whenever, because my point is cash flow, right? I, I, of course, I love equity, but we want that cash flow to replace our W yeah. incomes, right? Uh, so, um, I forgot what I was saying. You're going to have to add that too. <laughs> <laughs> I is it, I this is too with. much fun. <laughs> hey, no, this is perfect. I love this. People are gonna be like, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. But anyhow, my the cash flow is really what I'm looking for, not as much as the equity. So yeah, you know. No, I think I think the cash flow is is not only that, but it helps as motivation. That it, it gives you a measurement of of you doing things right. You know, if you get that, 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 that check every month and you're like, okay, something's working, you yes. know, the equity is, it's like, oh no, I got to wait for this now. And hopefully the market doesn't go down and yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. to me, yeah, it's, it's cash flow. Yeah. Definitely. If you're betting, if you're yeah. betting just on equity, you're betting at the wrong time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I remember where I was going, and I don't know why I went on the cash flow tangent. But I was Go saying ahead. for me uh, that that I I like the cash flow, and that's why I, I like buying holds and doing the bird, right? Uh, but for me, the most the, the part of the whole process that I am most anxious about, I'm pretty chill about. Okay, if I don't get my offer accepted, I'm fine. It's just a business, you know. But the part that I get most anxious about is actually putting the market for rent. <laughs> yeah. And that time frame of, okay, let's get a tenant. <laughs> that for me is the most nerve, nerve wracking part of the process. Because until you have a tenant, a good tenant there in place, you, you know, you're paying the bills. And yeah. so that's for me. And that's why now I have three units because we just finished our rehabs and three of them uh, are on the market. So crossing fingers here that we'll get someone soon. Nice. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, we, we definitely we definitely know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> How where are you guys at now? Where we have uh, in in Ohio, we have our okay. our properties are in Ohio. What's um, your portfolio? What's the, uh, what does have, it look like? Uh, 20, 22 units, uh, spread over 13, 13 properties. Well, fourteen if you count the one I have here in Colorado, which is a duplex. Um, so yeah, that that's. Pretty much we, we do multifamily, but I can tell you that for us, once we got into these, we discovered what we want to do, which is syndication, which is yeah. a real estate firm mm -hmm. and expand into the, to the point where we're not doing apartment buildings. Sweet. Uh, can, <laughs> the step from where you're at is really not that far from, and where we're all at really right now when we're talking, it's not really that far from the jump to raise capital or having the capital for mm -hmm. them because there, there's what we went through was private money we, for these, mm -hmm. this portfolio mm -hmm. we did private equity and that's how we purchased and we could have done a way bigger portfolio we we just didn't know that we could mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah we were at that stage where you don't know what you don't know yeah, yeah. and also so we're doing the same thing that that we're reading books it's like no you gotta as a matter of fact, and I don't know if we're going to edit this part or not, but just because we're making a we're, we're <laughs> conversation now, the uh, our goal was, hey, let me fly to Ohio and let me buy one or two properties, right? Because, I mean, now we're, we're you know, combining our, our, our funds and let me go out there and let me buy one or two properties. And then we found out that we could owe more than that. So it was like, oh, let's buy this portfolio, right? These 13 properties, multifamilies, boom. As soon as we closed, but how did you find out? So how did you find that out? And what is it exactly that changed that mindset? Go ahead, Oscar. So how did I find the deal? No, how did you find out that you were not tied to just two, that you could do more? What was the information you got that you said, no, you can net, actually buy more? Net, networking. <clears throat> so no. I got in contact, I got in contact with a uh, private lender that I knew here in California. And, and I mean, when you talk about this portfolio, I'm like, oh my God, this is too, I knew it was a good deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I knew it was a good deal. It's like, oh my God, we need to get into this. We need partners. So I, I texted her and I was like, I need a partner, but we need to, we need to get this. And she's like, oh no, you can do it. And I'm like, oh my God, what do you mean you can do it? It's like, why? And she's like, no, we'll structure it. We'll make it happen. Oh. So anyway, we went to the structure, we closed, we were so happy. Yeah. And then we realized that we could have done a way bigger deal with what, with what we How had. How many units was that one? 20. 20. Oh, that 20 was a 20. 20 oh. doors, yeah. That was one shot. You said I'm then yeah. so wow. Once we saw that and we saw that, what, what really clicked in my mind was that there's two types of banking, right? There's the, there's the traditional conventional banking, um, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie, right? You, you go to the bank, they run your credit, right? And that's very contingent on you, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's the private money side, which is there's private mm -hmm. equity, private lenders, and then you can also raise your own cash, right? All these right here are only based on the asset that you're buying. If you mm -hmm. find a good portfolio, <laughs> good apartment building, a good whatever, and it makes money, mm. it shows the numbers, you can project it as a business. They're not, they're not looking at you 
hundred percent, they're looking at the deal. Ninety-five mm -hmm. percent and looking at you, five percent. Mm -hmm. They still want you to have some experience, right? Um, what is typically the down payment for requested for those? So there's going to be a points fee, maybe one point uh, fee on the loan itself, um, and then twenty percent. Yeah, yeah, you need twenty. Twenty percent. Uh, we did twenty. Yeah, we did. No, we did twenty-five percent uh, mm -hmm. down payment. Um, mm -hmm. So there's different ways of doing it. And that's what I said. You don't necessarily have to do it the traditional way. And then once we saw that, right? Because we thought the same thing. Oh, we'll just maybe Burr. We'll, my brother was gonna fly out and buy one or two properties, and we came back with twenty. Right. Oh, you can do this, right? And it's not but then, but then, but then, her question was, how did we find out that we could have done more? Well, I, I just said once I, for me, once I found out the different sides of, of banking, the lending, the mm -hmm. creative financing, mm -hmm. um, because it, you can also tie that in now with owner finance. You tie that in with uh, seller carry, where if it's worth more than what they're selling, you mm -hmm. can ask them to raise the price. You tie that money back in. And now you put no money down hmm. so it helps i still have to learn i have to read that book on how to raise whatever <laughs> i have to read that capital? yeah, no, yeah. Book. and that's what i said to me th those books took me to a different jump too because it it, it took me from a a slower process to thinking wow you know i'm just gonna think huge because the steps are there and the way to do it is there it's just a matter of putting the little pieces together again Mm -hmm. Just like you put the little pieces right for finding out these uh, property management and all that, like it's it's the same thing, the same effort, just at a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. But the same effort's there. Yeah. Yeah, because one thing I see for me, and probably off the record here, one of my challenges is okay, I'm comfortable taking risks with my money, but I don't know if I can handle the pressure of failing with somebody else's money, which I don't think I would fail, but you know, that, that's a barrier that I have on raising, you know, hard money or, you know, getting even family members on board just because of, you know, okay, now I have that pressure of their money, not only yeah. mine. So I, I understand completely because I mean, that, that to me, I think <laughs> someone else's money is a huge responsibility. Um, and that's one of the things that, for example, we had a, we had two other deals that came up recently. Uh, we had it that were really solid and we were really close to closing. One was a 24 unit um, uh, townhouse. town, uh, townhouses. The other was a uh, 50 unit, um, like a permit building. The 50 unit didn't really work out because it was a, it was really run down. We didn't want to like, have that headache. Uh, the 24 unit one, however, it was amazing. Um, and it, were, it was going to provide uh, 17, a, what was it? A 20, 20, 21% um, annual return for, oh, investors, pretty good. Yeah. for investors. Um, and then it was going to provide a, I think it was a 12, 15 cash on cash. Um, really great now 17 percent irr like really really good however what we realized was that we we did raise some cash about 200k but we realized that it really is that's this is something that we want to do right so we slowed down and we said okay we want to make sure we have the structure set up correctly because we could have gone forward with it but it i wasn't too confident that the structure that we had it's gonna be the best, and we would have been sloppy. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna look bad to people. Like I would have yeah. still paid mm -hmm. everything, but I wanna, I wanna make sure we do transparency. And yeah. Right. So, but yeah, that that's that's our little thing there. <laughs> <laughs> what we're trying to do. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, but that that's basically how we came with the uh, with the twenty units and how we change our view and our trajectory to where we wanna go now. But going back in, in, in to your story, yeah. all right. So what's the uh, so we know that you wanna you wanna supplement your 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 salary, your W two, which you already do, right? And your husband's in five years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where do you see yourself in ten years? So what's your what's your big goal? 
for the next 10 years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't think I have thought that far out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know the, the, the farthest I've gone was the five years to, uh, to offset, but hopefully um, by then, because for now, I like actively investing, which is one of the reasons I decided not to go syndication, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's because I want to get my hands on it. I want to be part of the big decisions. Like, you know, I want to know when to put my money, when to put my money and, and, uh, and all that. So I think that by that time, maybe within the five years, maybe I have had enough fun with active <laughs> and then, okay, now I'm just going to chill. Uh, and maybe by that time, I'll get my money into some of the syndications for the cash nice. flow. Yeah. Nice. And, yeah. and you mentioned, and I, I was going to, actually, I was going to steer in on the side because you mentioned at the, at the beginning of the, uh, actually, I don't know if it's going to be on the podcast or not, but you mentioned about influencer. Is that something yeah. that, that interests you to teach people how to do this, how to get here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, because I... <laughs> In Brazil, I was a teacher. Here in the States, I've been, uh, you know, teaching and instructing and facilitating workshops and seminars on my, you know, corporate career. Uh, so just because I'm not on my W-2 anymore, but I still want to help people somehow, nice. right? Nice. And if it's sharing what I know, as I learn along the way, I'll be glad to do that. So whatever I can have. and especially I see a lot of military spouses is struggling right they rely so much and they the whole life is evolved around the husband or the wife or whoever is the active duty right and no oh, but because we move so much I can't hold a job oh because you know and, and, and so hard so I see so many spouses is struggling with that because they have to follow you know the spouse along the way so you know, I want to help and I want to share that, hey, it's doable, it's passive income, and, you know, so hopefully. And it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Oscar. No, I, I think I think that that's amazing. I think, uh, you know, we, we it's, it's kind of late over here, too, and I just want to wrap it up and say thank you for, for coming on the, the podcast with us. I think your story is really, really inspirational. Thank Especially you. Who are, who are starting out. One last thing. What's the yeah. number one advice you would give to someone starting out? The number one. Um, oh my gosh, I have a tie here. Can I do two? <laughs> yes, go, go. <laughs> Um, so for me, number one would be educating yourself, right? Because I always wanted to, and you know, like we were saying, you don't know what you don't know. Uh, so once you actually start doing research and you, you get the education piece, you see all the possibilities that are in front of you, right? And then you can plan from there and more focus on what you want to focus on, but learn the most as you can. I mean, I, I listen to podcasts every single day, every day I'm on it, every day I'm on bigger podcasts, reading forums, every day I'm reading articles that come to my inbox, right? Uh, and tied to that, I would say, especially for those that are just beginning or they say they don't have any cash to invest, uh, be smart about your money, right? Like I said, I came with a thousand dollars in my pocket, right? <laughs> I didn't have anything. Uh, I didn't have a car, so just be smart, work hard, but be smart about your money and live under your means. That I think, you know, if you really want to accomplish and do big things out there, be smart about it. Yep. No, I agree. Well, tell us, um, you know, where where can people find you? You want to be? Do you have a blog? Your own blog yet? I don't have a blog yet. I've been contemplating, but for now, people can find me on Instagram. Uh, it's Constance underscore Living the Dream. Here I am in Hawaii, having fun with her estate, and you know, getting to know all some places. So Constance underline uh, underscore Living the Dream. I'm also on Facebook. You can find me just by my name, Constance Cabo Small. And we're gonna have it. We're gonna have it on the notes as well, so Sweet. so people can find you. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. When you when you get your podcast, please invite us in. <laughs> <laughs> I will do. Thank you. Awesome, amazing. <laughs>